Hello everyone, uh, this is Dr. Amit here again. Today we are going to talk about how to flush out your blood sugar overnight. A few easy steps. Now first talk, let's talk about why is your blood sugar really up in the morning, right? So there are a couple of reasons for that. Well, if your blood sugar is high to begin with, by the time you go to bed, it'll probably be high more than likely in the morning. So if you're not checking your blood sugar before you go to bed, then you don't really know if your blood sugar was already high to begin with, or is it going higher overnight? So that's number one step, right? Number two, try to find out what your blood sugars are around like maybe 2 a.m. because that is when your blood sugar is supposed to be the best. Your body is very insulin sensitive. All the cortisol, growth hormone, they're all gone. Nobody's home. And by the way, if it is gonna go down, if you're on insulin or something like that, one to 2 a.m., is the most likely time frame for the blood sugar to go down. But if your blood sugar is already high at 2 to 3 a.m. compared to nighttime, that means that your blood sugars are continuously going up, which is more of a problem than the dawn phenomenon, which is another topic where, you know, your blood sugar may be perfect until 3, 4 o'clock, and then next thing you know, your blood sugar starts going up, uh, starting at 4 or 5 o'clock, and it may continue all the way sometimes to the lunch, and it may actually get worse after you wake up. That is because of the counter-regulatory hormone, we call them, and they are almost anti-insulin. They're like cortisol, growth hormone, epinephrine, and things like that, that basically flood your system and make you insulin resistant. So that's why for a lot of people it's a challenge. And then when you wake up high in the morning, and you may not even check your blood sugar right away, and if you do, great, and sometimes you check a couple hours later without a breakfast, and then you see that the blood sugar keeps going up, and you're like, what is happening? Where is that blood sugar coming from, right? It's a huge problem. So, well, we're gonna deal with that today. Well, again, we're gonna go back before we go to the morning time. We're gonna start with the dinner, right? So we're gonna find out if our blood sugar is high to begin with after dinner, but what is in your dinner will determine what your blood sugars are by the time you're going to bed. So it is important to keep your dinner nice and super low carb. So if you wanna be on low carb, that's the best time to be on low carb. And if you are really craving carbs, the best time to eat carb is actually probably the lunch time, especially for people who are at work or people who are out and about, more than likely you are going to actually get rid of those blood sugars just by being active. But what happens after dinner, you know, most of us know. So what happens after dinner? So everybody sits down and relax, you know, maybe a cup of coffee, and next thing you know, it's bedtime. And what did you do? Nothing, just sitting on the couch. That's even true for me. So who goes to exercise after dinner, which you should not be anyway. I mean, you should not be exercising after dinner. So the point is to have a very small, dinner with almost no carbs and no snacks after. That's number one step because that's gonna allow your body to deal with the blood sugar that you accumulated all day long because you wanna flush them out, right, overnight? Well, you don't wanna start with a big load of blood sugar to start with. So that's number one. Number two, you have to exercise. I know a lot of people will have excuses. I have back pain, I have this pain, but you have to just be creative and find out what works for you. If you have upper body, arms, whatever can get your heart rate up. Because if you are sedentary, that insulin resistance will settle in more and more and more every day. It's almost like putting money in a piggy bank, you know, a little bit of insulin resistance every day, resistance every day will be a big insulin resistance eventually. So make sure that we exercise so your body actually sucks in the glucose. Did you know that the effect of the exercise actually can last up to 24 hours? So if you're working out at 7 a.m. this morning, you can expect that the, your next morning blood sugar will be better based on the exercise you did today at 7 a.m. So, because your body, your muscles stay active and will absorb all that sugar, and that's how, one of the ways to flush the blood sugars out. Another way to really, you know, get rid of the blood sugar is staying hydrated, right? So your kidneys are the primary flushing organ. So you cannot pee crystals, can you? No, not really. So you have to really pee in water, which means that's your pee. So you're gonna pee in the water for that you need a lot of water because your pee can only hold so much sugar. 
because of the osmolality and all this medical stuff that I don't want to get into. But if you're dehydrated, of course your kidney will struggle to get rid of all this sugar. Now, if you are trying to hydrate yourself though, you have to be careful. If you're hydrating yourself late in the evening, then you're gonna be getting up too many times at night. And that may not be very good for you because then your sleep is interrupted and that can by itself can cause problems in your blood sugar level. So some people even get up and eat. That's, you know, things happen. So you wanna stay asleep all night long and that is one of the best ways to also help yourself. But if you are hydrated during the day and if you don't have a big carb meal at dinner, then you will be able to slowly eliminate that without having to get up like five times at night. Let's talk about medications, right? So medications are interesting. Sometimes they're necessarily evil, you have to take them, but I'm a big supporter of supplements. No, not just our supplements, but in general, if you th think that you're deficient in certain things, antioxidants, most diabetics are deficient, certain vitamins, diabetics are deficient. Certain herbs or compounds that work like medicine definitely will help to reduce the medication burden, which we talk about in this channel most of the time. There's one particular medication that I wanna to talk to you about, which is interesting. A lot of you may be taking it because a lot of my diabetic patients uh, take it. So Jardians, Farsiga, for example, right? So these two medications, you know, they have a lot of side effects and I'm not promoting those medications by any means, but sometimes we have to use them. And then what they do, they literally flush the sugar out of your kidney forcefully. So that's what medications do, right? They try to do a job that uh, we don't do. So we just said, just give me the medication. There are some patients who go, just give me the medication. I'm not gonna change anything. I'm just gonna still eat my pizza. I'm still gonna you know, sit on my bottle late. I'm just kidding, I'm not trying to be rude here. But you know, some people are like that. And guess what? Okay, well, you know, I'm not gonna beat you over it. So if that's what you want, I don't want you to die or succumb to complications. So I'll give it to you. And sometimes we have to, because some people will do everything, you know, and many people are like that too. They try their best, you know, their social circumstances, whatever it may be, you know, at the end of the day, they get stuck and their blood sugars don't go down anymore. Then we try supplements. If the supplements is not doing a job enough, then, then we sometimes end up in medications. Now, Jardines are far seeker. They're called SGLT2 inhibitors. They will flush the sugar out. I said forcefully because it, it literally does that anytime your blood sugar goes over 100 and that will make you get up at night. So especially if your blood sugars are high to begin with and you take these medications, you will be forcefully going to the bathroom three, four times maybe more than usual. But if everything fails, I would say, that is a way to flush out the sugar. However, it's not the first way, that's why I'm talking about this as the last resort. But anyhow, so I think we talked about pretty much everything to help you flush out the blood sugar overnight in your system. So you wake up refreshed with a nice blood sugar and hopefully continue that blood sugar. And I have videos about how to prevent blood sugar from going up. So basically all you have to do, type sugar MD and type whatever the question you have in the search on uh, YouTube and you will find the video. YouTube is good for that, right? It's a video search engine. So try it out. Anyhow, remember to give a thumbs up, remember to subscribe and share this video. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. Uh, it, if you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.